All right, everybody, back on the project of uh, working through our drawers here on the Snap-on box uh, in Tool Grid. And uh, I've, uh, off camera, I cut the, 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 the board. So I cut, uh, cut this and got it ready for the video for our pliers. Uh, I'm gonna put the, all of the, uh, what do you call it? Like the T-handle stuff. So I'm gonna put that in the bottom drawer because I need the height. Uh, so we'll skip this drawer. So this will be a drawer for future. Uh, so the thing with these goofy little drawers here, uh, we'll leave these alone for people to put like screws and stuff like that. Uh, and then I'm also going to work on uh, putting my hammers. I need the, the taller drawer so I could sta stand up a good portion of the hammers, save some space there. Uh, and then I'll probably have to do a fourth drawer for my, I forgot about my uh, pry bars, my files and the scrapers. I actually really like these scrapers. I mean, these things are pretty stout. Uh, these, I'm sure, would probably come in handy. I almost thought about stealing them and not putting them back and putting them in this. Uh, but if you're not familiar, you haven't been following along on this project, uh, I bought this box and the Sonic box over there, which I'm going to get into uh, as soon as I finish this one up, um, to compare personally for, for my own use uh, because I sell these products and I like tools a lot and I sell tools and cabinets uh, and so I bought this so I have a body of knowledge. I kind of did that with a Corvette too. <clears throat> I've been talking trash on Corvettes my whole life but now I can because I actually bought one. Um, and so if you're interested uh, in winning these, uh, you can uh, buy digital entries on obsessedgarage.com and uh, I'm going to put this sucker on a pallet. This is a $40,000 toolbox loaded up with all these tools uh, and uh, I'm going to put the, the Sonic loaded up with Sonic foam inlays as well on a pallet and ship it out. So the way it's going to work, you buy a digital entry or basically a digital raffle style ticket we can't call it that but it's you every five every dollar you spend you get an entry uh, I think right now we have uh, right now I'm gonna lose about 40 G's in this deal um, so uh, it, it's gonna be really really great odds like you're gonna have like a 1 in 10 or 1 in 20 chance of winning this crap uh, unless you know some of you go and buy stuff even if it does take off uh, here at the end of the month it ends on the 31st. Um, you're still going to have amazing odds. And we're going to put this sucker loaded up. Mike's going to build a little crate for it. We're going to ship it out to you. It's going to be probably 1,500 pounds. Uh, and it's going to be loaded up, as you can see, top drawer with room to expand, but uh, all of the uh, snap on sockets and ratchets. I mean, this drawer alone is probably six or seven thousand dollars worth of tools. Uh, and then I've got above that, I've got the screwdrivers. Then we have our wrenches, a bunch of ratcheting and long reach wrenches. I'd ordered more, um, they just don't have them. You know, Snap-on just apparently doesn't have a lot of stock and stuff, which is pretty normal for, for most companies. And so what we're gonna work on here today is we're gonna work on our pliers and uh, we'll see, well, maybe we'll do the T-handles real quickly. We'll, we'll see how this goes. But if you haven't been watching the series, we'll put a link in the description to the playlist. Uh, I showed, uh, this is a tool grid. These are six by six boards. Uh, I guess I don't have any laying around here. Um, but these are six inch by six inch boards uh, that, that clip together. And I showed, um, you know, cutting it with a circular saw, which most people would do. Uh, or if you happen to have a, a Swiss Trax floor tile cutter, you can use that. Uh, but I knocked this out here. This drawer with the floor tile cutter took me 10 minutes to, to snap together and to do it really cleanly and nicely. Uh, so we're gonna work with uh, these tools tend to work best with the two different types of Swiss, um, sorry, tool grid. The tool grid, uh, what do they call these? Multi, what are these ones called? Shoot, I don't remember the name of them, but they're on the site. We'll put them in the, in the description here. Uh, so this is a product called Mantis Tool Grid. Uh, it's a company out of Ontario. Um, they've designed and engineered these. I think all these parts are made in China, um, but they're designed and engineered in Canada, and then they're imported into Canada and then, then sent to us. We're, we're one of the dealers for it. Uh, and uh, so I've been playing with this stuff for probably I think 2019 is when I found them. Um, you can see the tool tool tip holders for the screwdrivers, and and of course uh, and the, the ratchet 
or wrench holders, ratcheting wrench holders. Uh, and, uh, and so here we're going to use the these. There's a tall version and a, and a normal version. Uh, it'll come to me in a minute here what they call these things. I think they're called like multi-tool holders or multi-something or other. It doesn't really matter what they're called. They work. All right, so this drawer is deep and relatively wide. Uh, it's not tall enough, so I'm saying deep front to back. It's not tall enough to fit my wrench standing up. So where this becomes, where tool grid becomes a real advantage is in storage of stuff like this. You know, this would take up an entire drawer if I laid everything out. So if you laid all your tools out like normal, uh, you would, you would, you know, clearly, we could fit all this in this drawer, but then I wouldn't have any real expansion capability. Uh, and so what these are gonna allow us to do is stand all of our tools up like so and fit, you know, fit this in a fraction of this drawer so that way we can expand and get more tools as time goes on. So let me just group these together by type. So there's cutters, dikes. So when you're doing tool grid, there's a lot of trial and error. You just kind of lay stuff out. Let me see if this one will fit. Yeah, I think this one can stand up. Yeah, I think we'll be able to do that in the drawer. We'll, we'll test that out. So this big one, I'm going to sit here. Let me see, are these gonna be able to go? Yeah, these will be able to fit too, I think. Now these have a auto open section here, so I don't know if that's gonna be problematic for us. And what I don't wanna do is open and get my drawer stuck. So I think it'd be smart to take up the space and lay these two down like so, and then kind of work around those. So I think most of these are gonna do best with a tall multi-purpose holder. I think that's what it's called. So if we do something like this, but I wanna keep my needle nose together. And I think this will be our transition piece here. So there's no right or wrong way to do this. You just kind of start playing with it, see what works. After I'm done with all my tools, I'm gonna to screw it all together. I actually think I would like a tool tip holder better here. Sorry, I did about a frickin' thousand dumbbell over the box. My frickin' body is broken. So I'm sitting on a chair here. Ugh. So when I lock this down with a screw, it'll hold it up vertically. And then let's move this over one more. Nope, it was better where it was. And so that tool will sit nicely like that. I think that's pretty good. So these, you know, you can't turn it this way because the pegs don't line up. The other thing I could consider here would be, let's see if it fits better in a wider one. And what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna drive the screw into this sucker because this is not gonna stay. So we'll get into this a little later, but uh, I like to use the longer bit here. And this is the surge version of the Milwaukee quarter inch impact. It's awesome. So the surge version, you have a little more control. You know, you're driving metal into plastic. <clears throat> and so we're not looking to drive it in to the point to where it uh, strips out. But normally I would wait till the end to lock this all down. But this one here, in order to kind of set this base, I think it makes sense to lock that one in. And so then, let me see how, let's set this up like this maybe. I like that there. We'll use the side to hold it in and then leave it open like that. And then I have, let's see if I kind of corner. So they also make these corner holders and I'll lock that in and then that'll stay put. Let's come back one more. It won't slide forward, it won't slide left to right. And I've got a delineated spot to put the thing. I like that. Okay, so that's a big space 
user. You know, what I could do is put a little zip tie on here and just lock this thing like this, but I kind of like this tool sitting like that because I got a lot of extra space because this drawer is giant. All right, so then these guys, I think we'll bring in, you know, so I could bring up like this. Let's try that. Bring this thing up here. I go like this. And then a tip holder isn't gonna work. So what I'll probably do is use this. Just turn it around opposite. That looks pretty good. So this will come out. Go right in that position. Cool. Like that. What do you think? That looks pretty good. I like that. Pretty efficient. So I'm going to set these here, but I'm not going to lock it in just in case we decide to move, move stuff. And so then my other needle nose, if I move this up a little bit, I can tuck this in. What I should do is put this little guy in here. That's better. And then this guy. Like this, okay. Looks pretty good. And I think I lied. I'm gonna lock these in because I was gonna be flopping around. So what you do is get the tool in position where you want it. Take the tool out. Put your finger on the holder. Hope it doesn't move on you. Check the fit. Boom. But see now, there ain't, there ain't no flopping around. Your tools are gonna stay put. And some of these small ones, you can leave the tool in there and sneak it past. I find this to be rather enjoyable. I think for our theme here, we've been kind of lining the front of the drawer. Oh shoot, oh crap, freaking idiot. It really locks in there. I think that looks freaking cool. So now I think let's make transition into our regular pliers. So I'll bring this here. Because this is kind of like a hybrid. I like these. LN46 ACF. I feel like this would be a pretty useful tool. Let's see, so, oh shoot. Oh God dang it. Should tuck this guy in the corner here. Yeah, I think that'll work. I don't like that. So my mistake actually worked out pretty well. I kind of like how that looks until I realize there's one more. No, nope, I think we're good. Okay, so. Let's do this right this time. So you got your lineman pliers. We've got big pliers, medium pliers, little pliers, whatever we want to call those pliers. And our channel locks are over here. Then we'll go into our lineman pliers, electrical pliers. We've got these. These are a um, Yeah, was like the mechanical advantage version. And we got this guy to work with. I think I'm gonna have to go get some more tip holders. Let's bring these over and see what happens. So like the other drawers, I would be more aggressively 
squeezing tools like to try to maximize every square inch. I don't think we need to do that here because I've got plenty of space in this box. But the cool thing about the modularity of this, whoever wins this toolbox, let's say you're gonna, you have a bunch of tools on your own, you're gonna wanna grid out some, some of your stuff and you don't wanna waste any space. You can always go and re, you know, redo it, adjust it. I wonder if, nah, I think tool tip holders are still gonna be the best option for those. So I'll go grab some of those. here let's stay a little too big like that see what I'm saying like you can squeeze and, and again I could get more aggressive and compact this even more like not stand this one or lay this one down so I think what I'm gonna do, because this is not gonna be used all the time, it would make sense to me to put this back even deeper because this one is gonna be so close. Hmm. Let's see. I wonder if I can fit all these over here. So I squeeze this guy. Can we fit all of our cutters over here? Kind of finish our left to right. Now I'm almost wishing I didn't do that. This goes here. I really like these. I hate the handles, but these seem like a really solid pair of wire strippers. We got this. These are gnarly, man. These look like they can cut some, cut some wire. This guy. Perfectly. Okay. And these guys can stay back here. I don't like these with the auto opening, spring loaded opening. I think it might make sense to just lay these all down since I have, I have, since I have the space. with the drawer unless you know what I would do is I'm gonna I would cut yeah I'm gonna do that for all these auto open ones I'm gonna make like a little little zip tie a little sleeve so that way they'll stay closed like this here I'll make a little sleeve for all these and then what I do is I is I take that zip tie and just slide it on the peg and then when I put the tool back in slide it back on Get some tool tip holders so I need so I only need three figures. Got it, I knew I was an idiot. These are called universal holders. That's what it's called. And a multi-tool holder. Boom. All these little spring loaded guys. All I do. You just a little zip tie, a little wrap, or even better. Like that. There's a drone out there buzzing around. Like a city drone or something.
So shoot it down. Maybe he'll shoot that frickin' drone down. I'm telling you, there's a drone that's buzzing around. What the heck? You need a lead for, letter for the. Never heard a drone out here in our lives until we decided to build the shed. Yeah, the little zip tie collar solution is a great solution. I'm telling you, no matter how many times I do this, I feel like I check it over nine times, I'll still miss like three spots of screws somehow. So somehow I'll come back to this later and see, oh shoot, I missed one. Even if I check it. This one isn't a great option, but I went like this. I think it's gonna work better like that. Let's screw it in and see what happens. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. There we go. So, here is your pliers drawer. You can draw it, you know you're missing it. You know it needs to go back in place. It's beautiful. Like this. I get a freaking letter for that shed. I don't think you need a permit for a shed. All right, I got hammers to do. These are, these are theoretically a lot easier. So this, I think what I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna take these guys like this. Cause these aren't super stable cause they're rounded on the end. All right, so I'm finishing up, this is the next day. So I finished up this drawer. So the hammer drawer turned out pretty nice. So you got a nice quick draw. Boom, boom. Those of you who are watching this video right now this week, um, we've been selling freaking tool grid like crazy as you might imagine. So I ran out, I had to go rob from my other drawer over there. Um, so uh, just put reserve your spot. We should have it in a couple of days. So, so if you reserve your spot on the, on the product, we'll, we'll have it in quickly. So the hammer drawer is good. See how I mounted the big one. So have some expansion room for hammers. And then all of these guys I'm doing with tip holders and the taller universal holders. And so I'm just kind of knocking this out and then we're gonna be done. This is, uh, it's been a fun, uh, fun little experience getting this. Every time I get to spend with a product, I get to spend extra time you know, working with a product. It helps me come up with ideas of things that where I can maybe provide myself with some support on, you know, what would I have wanted to know had I not ever bought bought the product before and then I can impart that and share that with you. So me doing this these exercises despite the fact this is what I already like to do is super useful I think for the greater good. So screw these all in. I think I've already screwed all those over yeah did that last night. 
So half the time of this is figuring out like how you want it to look and how it's going to go together. But then once you kind of get the vision for it, it moves quite a bit quicker. Our next video will be comparing and talking about um, foam. So there's a pallet behind my E92 there of the Sonic foam that we're going to put in the Sonic box so we can kind of compare and contrast the difference, different organization systems as well as you know, dig into the difference in tools a little bit as well. What we're going to end up with is a two similar, similarly priced toolboxes, uh, but a, I think uh, it's a much more complete set. There's a lot more individual pieces for a lot less money on the Sonic side of things. And I'm going to show you, you know, my argument is that the quality of this is actually in many cases quite a bit worse. So, and that's the, not the common, that's not common knowledge. The misconception is that hands down, snap-on's the best and there's no if, ands, or buts. But, I mean, these are not very good. And this was probably two and a half times the cost in tools of what it, it is in, you know, in a, a Sonic equivalent. Or even going out in the marketplace and trying to find best, best in class, best of the best. So where would you put these? I think it'll look best if I did these. Because these you don't use very much. I don't even know why I bought these. I think I'm going to tuck them in the back here. Thirteen, twelve. Nope, there's a thirteen. Thirteen, twelve, ten, eight, and seven. Tip holders. I don't know if this tip holder is going to work. It's pretty sharp. Yep, I like it. And then, I wonder if I have room to put all those. I don't think it makes sense to put all those. We'll put these in here as well. Sweet, clean. All right, let me put these nut drivers here. So these also won't be used a whole heck of a lot. 13. Two, three, four, five, six, seven figures. Frick, they come in a six pack. I think I can put these all in this drawer. I think that might make sense, don't you? Because I got room to put this here. And this. And that up there. And I don't mind that these are in the bottom drawer because you're not going to use that all the time. Here, you can do that. Nice. We can do these guys here. So let's take these two fat ones. It might look better if I flip it and that way. There, every other. I'm gonna do it with the corners. Last ones. Guys, up. God, freaking legs. Okay. Yeah, I think I like them slightly angled like that. One, two. on this part of the project. Next up will be labeling. So I'll do a little labeling series for you using these guys. I don't think I'll label any of this stuff, but I will be labeling some of the ratchets and things like that. So we tackled this drawer today, not bad. Tackled this drawer yesterday, earlier in the video. So we got some room in there to 
work with if we needed to add some more stuff. And we did our hammers here. So that means ultimately the toolbox for the winner uh, will have an empty drawer here, here, this one, oh, shoot. A tool grid everywhere, and then this drawer. And then of course in previous videos we did, we got room for more wrenches. We have, oh, I'll do these and I'll do these off camera, but I'll do those files. And then lots of room for extra ratchet stuff in the future. So thanks for watching this one. We'll see you on the next one with um, labeling. And, uh, and then there'll be a separate video on the cost. So I'm gonna add up all this tool grid. What did it cost? What parts and pieces did we need? Uh, and then we'll start to get into the sonic box to compare.